straight to the office of the president because the Commission of Inquiry into the Ayawasu West Wogan by election violence has recommended that Minister of State in charge of national security, Brian Echampong, be reprimanded in authorizing an operation that led to the mayhem at the polling station. The white paper to the report, which is yet to be published, also recommended that the SWAT commander, DSP Samuel Azugu, be removed. Yes, a report. DSP Samuel Azugu was in charge of operations at Baalishin polling station on the day of the Ibai election. The Mill Short Commission in the report said DSP Azugu failed to properly command and control his men. The members of the commission want DSP Azugu's removal to be immediate and recommended the Inspector General of Police to reassign him. The commission recommended the Director of Operations at the National Security, Colonel Mike Opoku, be reprimanded for being ultimately responsible for the outcome of the SWAT operation. At least 16 persons were injured after some national security operatives invaded the residence of the NDC parliamentary candidate with the belief that he had a stockpile of arms. All right, so we've been following this particular report since the commission presented it to the president. And uh, interestingly, there are a number of recommendations that would want to take you through them. They would speak to uh, security analyst Adam Bonner to find out whether or not uh, these recommendations, as per the commission's um, you know, work, is something feasible that the, uh, the government should follow. So top of the uh, recommendations for us will be the fact that this man in question, Imanola Kumia, who... Uh, when the commission met, came and was known as double, look at those biceps, said that um, the commission is recommending that the criminal prosecution be taken against Mr. Ernest Akumia alias double for the unauthorized possession of firearms under section 192 clause 1 of the Criminal Offenses Act. It goes on to say that this man in question, who is uh, Mohammed Suleimana, he slapped the Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, Sam George. Now, the Commission recommends that criminal prosecution be taken against Mohamed Suleimana for the offence of assault to wait the slapping of Sam George, MP for Ningo Pram Pram. This is um, Samuel Azugu. The Commission recommends the immediate removal of DSP Samuel Azugu from command responsibility at the Ministry of National Security given his failure to appropriately command and control the SWAT team of which he had charge during the operation at the Labaolishi School Polling Station. It also recommends that he uh, be reassigned by the IGP. This is Colonel Mike Opoku. The commission is recommending that uh, Mr. Michael Poku, or Colonel Michael Poku, be re reprimanded for being ultimately responsible for the outcome of the SWAT operations at the Labaolishi polling station. His liability is further reinforced by his failure to properly define the mission for which the SWAT team was sent. Further, he failed to conduct an internal inquiry into identifying the culprits of the offense when revelations became rife that there were operational lapses resulting in violations for human rights. And just in case you do not know who exactly he is, he's the Director of Operations at the National Security. Uh, still on him, the Commission also added that uh, they recommend that Kenolopoku be made to immediately release the weapons that were used there at the polling station, as well as the persons involved uh, in that operation to enable ballistic testing and analysis to be undertaken and for further investigations to be undertaken by the police. This is Mr. Brian Champong. The commission recommends that Mr. Brian Champong be reprimanded for his ultimate responsibility as minister in authorizing an operation of that character on a day of an election in a built up area. And uh, finally, uh, so that is one of the recommendations, or a few of them. We also have a number of the recommendations that we couldn't capture here, but it is still in that report. And uh, we want to take you through them briefly and quickly. One of them is that the Minister of State appointed at the presidency uh, to the Ministry of uh, National Security should have a clearly defined role uh, delineated with responsibilities indexed to that of the substantive sector minister. There seem to be a number of layers of security officers and the commission is recommending that their roles should be clearly defined so they do not uh, uh, usurp that, uh, the power of either of the, their colleagues. 
Furthermore, the commission recommends that no masked or hooded men be used for civilian policing, especially in electoral policing or the execution of intelligence contingent on or connected with any ongoing election in Ghana. Clearly, the problem that many people had was that this SWAT team you are seeing on your screens right now, when they got there, they had put masks on their faces. And what that did was it scared the people the more. So the commission says no masked or hooded men be used for civilian policing. Also, the commission recommends that SWAT teams and police officers deployed to maintain the peace and order on electoral grounds must have rigorous training in crowd control, arrests, and perimeter security for both ongoing electoral exercises and for any other allied uh, security issues that may emerge in an ancillary fashion. The commission further recommends that standard rules and procedures for the issuance of weapons and ammunition to police officers and operatives of the national security who are sent on missions and accompanying rules of accountability for these weapons and ammunition must be enforced. And you will recall that in the last few days, there has been a conversation as to whether or not police officers be given weapons when especially those that are doing the MTTD jobs. Should they be giving weapons? Shouldn't they? The commission is saying that if you're going to give them, be sure that you've trained them properly before you hand them weapons. In the final bit, it says the commission recommends that the police should mount public education on crime scene management to ensure that the public would avoid interfering with crime scenes and thereby protect the integrity of evidence for further prosecution. And uh, finally, the commission recommends that an independent police complaints commission based outside the police structure be established to deal with complaints from the public on the conduct of police officers and so promote police accountability. And uh, those are the two key things uh, that have asked, you know, that stand out for me when, when it comes to the number of the recommendations that have been made. We'll be talking to Mr. Adam Bona uh, shortly, but you'd also want to go to our website, 3 We have the full recommendations from the commission there. You might want to grab it and then read to get to know what other recommendations were made. Let's go and talk to Mr. Adam Bona right now. He's a security analyst and also uh, has been following this particular development quite closely. Mr. Bona, good afternoon to you and thank you very much for joining us. Um, I'm sure that you've seen or also heard the, some of the reports that were made, that, the recommendations that have been made. What are your initial reactions to some of the recommendations? Right. So good afternoon to your viewers. Well, my initial recommendations has to do with the fact that, uh, or my, my initial comment has to do with, uh, to do with the recommendation, has to do with, uh, the, the the report itself it looks a bit vague uh, for some of the very important uh, elements. For instance, if uh, the commission recommended that uh, Brian Honourable Brian Achampong, uh, Colonel Opoku, and uh, a few of them be reprimanded, if you say reprimanded, that uh, in simple terms is too vague. Mm. I mean, reprimand could be. Just give them, uh, you know, a query letter, and it ends there. And so, looking at the severity of, uh, you know, the what took place, one would have wanted the commission to be very firm and also go direct and say either dismiss them or move them from that uh, role completely. But that was not done. We they rather recommended that they be reprimanded. Reprimanded. I mean, it's too vague. But if you look at uh, DSP Azugu, for instance, there again, they said DSP Azugu should be moved and reassigned. But nothing was uh, said about whether he should be punished. I'm not sure if moving him amounts to being punished because DSP Azugu, uh, this uh, whole commission uh, was uh, telecasted. We all watched it. Uh, he lied. I mean, and therefore, if you lie to a commission like that, he should have been cited for perjury. But that has not been done. I was also expecting that the commission would actually uh, re require that uh, DSP Azugu, apart from uh, some of these recommendations I wanted to see, be uh, made to undergo training. Hmm. DSP Azugu lacks policing ethics and training. And therefore, 
uh, apart from being moved, because if you move him, you are only going to create a mess at, uh, you know, the, the station is going to be going to or wherever he's going to be going to. Therefore, he needs to be trained. And so, uh, and uh, what is it? Uh, the the young, the, the gentleman who slapped... Yeah, Suleiman uh, Mohammed. Yeah, who slapped uh, Honorable Sam George. I think that the it wasn't even up to the commission to recommend that he's prosecuted. But of course, they are doing their work. We all know that uh, if you slap... Uh, it's criminal. If you slap somebody just like that, it's criminal. Mm. And therefore, he should by now have been facing uh, having his day in court. And also, the double who took the gun from uh, the one of the police officers, and according to him, fired a single bullet. I mean, we know uh, if you are not licensed to handle a weapon, mm. you're not supposed to use it. And this is a state weapon he took, according to him. Right. And therefore, he's been recommended for, uh, what do you call it, prosecution, which I think is good. But what I want to see is that he should be uh, prosecuted using the new uh, vigilantism and other uh, related offenses law. No, okay. Within that law, it says that there is no the option of a fine, because I suspect that we might have a situation where he has his day in court, and uh, if they don't use the new vigilantism or related offenses act to prosecute uh, law to prosecute him, but he's for, going for those, to go home with a fine. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Bonner, for those who have been, uh, for those whose names have been specifically mentioned, uh, like you talked about Suleiman and Mohammed, uh, DSP Azugu, etc. Do you think that the punishments or the recommendations made are punitive enough? In the case of Suleiman and Mohammed, we are even told that the white paper seemed to exonerate him. That no action will be taken against him. Do you think that if a recommendation is made by a commission set up by the president is not followed, what does that tell us as a people? I can, I can only smile and say that uh, what it means is that uh, if a member of parliament accost me, I should be able to slap him. That's what it literally means. It means that uh, our, unfortunately members of parliament would have to ready themselves because if the gentleman who slapped uh, Honorable Sam George is not punished according to law. Mm. And remember, parliamentarians enjoy certain immunity. I mean, they, uh, I mean, they, they, you can't even just arrest them. And so, if an ordinary person is slaps, I mean, a member of parliament and a sitting member of parliament, and we are told that uh, the person should not be punished and mm. he might not be punished, then we are opening the floodgates for mm. our Assault. members of parliament, mm. you know, to be assorted during elections and when they go they every now and then they have issues with their constituents. But finally, so do, do you have confidence in the, these recommendations? Do you have confidence that looking at this and the fact that we are just a few months away from the 2020 elections, these are going to be good enough guidelines for the country, the security setup, the electoral commission and the presidency for that matter going into the elections? Well, well, I think that uh, the commission did a very, you know, good work. And therefore, I am hoping and praying that the executive, the president, and his team would implement uh, the recommendations to the latter. If it is done and done well, then 2020, uh, we might not see this spectacle we saw uh, during the Ayawa West were going by election. But you see, uh, if we have to go back into history, there mm. has been various... Uh, commissions and uh, most of them were never implemented but I'm hoping that the president has uh, the opportunity to, to lead us and make sure that these recommendations uh, are implemented so that 2020 we can all uh, be safe. Always a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Adams Bonna, for, uh Thank you very much for making time to talk to us as always. This is Midday Live on TV3. And um, just before we go, though, uh, some compensations have also been uh, recommended by the commission in that report that a few names mentioned in the report be compensated. And then also those who lost the vehicle, a woman we are told lost her shop. She's also supposed to be given some compensation. Go to 3news.com. That's our website. Details of this report would be found there.